Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey, Kevin. It's been a while. I'm Ralph, behind the camera. It has, and by what you're seeing, you probably know we are back in the D. Um, cottage season is over, and uh, cottage is all buttoned up for a long winter's nap. But we're still cooking, and, and you we're still eating. And you sound like that woman on Night Court, <laughs> Selma Diamond. <laughs> And I'm on the back end of a very bad cold. It was a respiratory infection anyways. I'm better um, on the men, but I, if my voice is a little huskier than normal. This it's is not why. from the Pall Malls. No, it's not. <laughs> um, so anyways. What do we got cooking today? Well, we're actually going to make a pie today. All right. Okay. Um, and because uh, we're going over some friends later, uh, you know, we're bringing dessert. Uh, and we thought, well, what can we bring... Uh, that maybe would be different. A little different. A little different. So we're going to make a pineapple cream pie. Wow, I've heard of banana cream and okay. coconut cream, but so, I don't know if I've ever heard of a pineapple cream. Well, this is uh, going to be sort of in that. It's going to be kind of a cross between, uh, you know, a lemon meringue, but no meringue. We're going to put a cream topping on it. Wow. Um, but the, the filling is sort of going to be... The the pineapple. Like a, yeah, pineapple. -y. Okay, so here's the thing what we're going to do. We got a nine inch pie plate. Now, I made some crust earlier and I have it in the fridge here, chilling out. Um, if you want to make your own pastry dough, do so. Um, we've got a number of videos on Cavalcade of Food where I make uh, pie crust. Uh, if uh, you are of the mind that you would just assume go and buy it uh, at the store pre-made, great. And you know what? You don't have to. You can fast forward through this step. Yeah, that's because... the mind I'm of. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready here to roll out the pie dough. Um, so I made it. You want to make sure it's nice and cold. It's been in the refrigerator a couple hours. Now, I have to tell you, I've struggled with pie crust. Sometimes it's a success, sometimes it's not. One thing that really challenged me uh, in making pie crust is the rolling out part, and it would stick to the board, and it would stick to the rolling pan, and remember how mad I'd get, right? <laughs> well, tell folks what you just did. So what I did is I realized that what works best for me is to use a pastry cloth. Now they make pastry cloth that's kind of a thicker, heavier cloth, um, and I had one and it fell apart in the wash, but so what I've decided to do, and this has worked ever since, is I just get a clean towel, okay, a clean cotton towel to use. Like a kitchen and, towel, tea yeah, towel. tea towel. You can see I sprinkled it with flour, okay. Like, oh, I don't know. There's probably uh, it's hard to see. Yeah, white on white, few but a few tablespoons of flour. Okay. I got one of these nifty Tupperware uh, flour sifter outers. Look at that. See? That's cool. And um, it's just great for something like this. Then what I do is I get a little rolling pin sleeve here. Look at this. Mm -hmm. And so this puts the fabric on the rolling pin as well. I'm going to roll that into some of this flour. Anyways, I find that using the pastry cloth and the, the rolling pin cover really helps and the me. Cold, the cold dough. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to first kind of press it out with my, just with my hand. Now, of course, you got to, whenever you're making a pie, you're going to have your, you're going to have your pastry, but this is a cream pie. This is our pies that we do what we call a blind baking with the crust. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? That means that we bake the pie shell, the pie crust, first. Mm -hmm. Just on its own, with nothing in it. Okay. Then we take it out, let it cool, and then we put the filling in. Okay? Mm -hmm. Lemon meringue, coconut cream, banana cream, chocolate cream. These are all pies where you're not baking the filling of the pie. So you can't put that stuff on top of a raw piece of dough, like if you're making an apple pie or a cherry pie, because you got to cook the dough. So what do you do? 
means you bake your dough first. So they're just two separate steps. It doesn't yes. seem like, I don't know why they call it blind. Well, I think they call it blind because there's nothing inside. It's oh. just, okay, of the dough, of okay. the shell. So right. I okay, so now we start our rolling process, okay? And this still gets me a little bit sometimes, but, uh, you know, I try to go so many strokes in this direction and then so many strokes in that direction. Basically, we know how, depending on the size um, pie plate that you use, and we're using a 9-inch here. You want it to go over the edge. You want it to go over the edge. So you, you have an idea of how big you need to have it. And you can always put this over. Yeah, it sometimes I do to make sure it's like, oh, I'm almost there, see? So... Oh, I thought I invented that. No, but it's a you 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 had a good thought there. <laughs> okay, Ralph. Okay. So how's it um, now behaving so far? So far, so good. Okay, I think we're gonna be okay here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop rolling, and I'm going to take this fabric. See what I did there? Yeah, you let it. You let the crust just kind of fall off of it, right? Yeah. Then I'm gonna transfer it like this to the pie plate. There we go. Okay. So now, the nice thing about this is I'll shake that out Easy outside and then throw that in the washing machine and we're done. That's all clean. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press this into our pie plate here. Okay? Is that where it tears sometimes? Sometimes. So what you want to do is you want to press this down. Gently. And then, once you get it in place, now you have to decide, what do you want to do with this extra crust? You can trim part of it if you want, okay? What I do is I fold over, because I like to have a little bit of a heartier crust on the outside. Bit of see a see how I'm folding it? Makes like a lip or an edge. Yeah, I'm just kind of folding it and then pressing it against the top of the plate. Now some of this may, the hangover amount might be a little more than I will need and maybe I'll have to trim some of it. But It's a different kind of hangover. Different, yes, very. So you don't have to take any of it off? or are, Oh right yeah, here, I see I'm going to pull some of this. Because this is, is a little is, too much. Yeah, this is a little too so much. So to somewhere. make it consistent. Right. Now if I was... If you were thinking about it, you could have put this and wet it and added it to the pocket. I that's, may still do that. Okay. Just a this little, is a little too much here, maybe. too. So I really should be using a pair of scissors so this, instead of tearing it. <laughs> so this but, is not going to have a crust. It's going to have a cream frosting, you said? Right. This is, doesn't have a top crust, okay? That's what I meant. Top yeah, crust. top crust. Okay, so where is that part that we thought was kind of... Was it here? Yeah, I think so. So what I'm going to do is, if you take, you take a little water... What if you had an atomizer with water you could spray into sure it? Sure you could. Okay. By the way, uh, something to know is that the oven is preheated right now or, uh, at 450 degrees. Since we're back in our Detroit kitchens here, you know that we are enjoying our Westinghouse 1963 Westinghouse Terrace, terrace Top. top. Not Triceratops, Terrace Top. <laughs> yes. It's so okay. cool. Now, what I'm going to do, Ralph, is I'm going to make sort of a little design. And I do this thumb and forefinger mm -hmm. on the left, forefinger on the right, and I just push, push, push. See what's happening? You get kind of get that. Yeah. See that scallop effect. That's how you effect? know it's homemade too, because it's. Uh, it's not it, perfect. It's not perfect, but it's a, it creates a nice um, edge for the insides not to spill out of. Right. So what we want to do again, because we're not unlike a fruit pie, we're not baking, we're not cooking the insides, the filling at the same time. So we are. Uh, we're just going to want to make sure this is done right. right. Yeah. Now, before I put that in the oven, I'm going to get a fork. That looks nice. And this is an important step. This is uh, airing it out kind of? This will, because you're not going to have any filling in here to hold it down. This will to let the steam escape. Oh, so okay. You baked it. So it doesn't puff up. Yes, I got you. You'll also see, you may have heard things called uh, pie beads or... Um, high weights.
they actually make things that you can put in here. Some people use uh, dried beans to hold the crust down. So is that instead of the poking? Instead of, the of balls? poking it around, I just do this. I don't. I don't know. I maybe it uh, depends on what you're going to put in it. Like maybe you, it does. Like if you don't want it to. Drip people out. who are really pie Experts. bakers could, might know. I don't make enough pies. I like. I love pies. I love to make them. But you don't fuss about all these different. No. I don't. Yeah, there may be a, if someone knows a, the, the best method for that kind of stuff, let me know. Put, or or definitive or definitive reason for why you would use uh, pie weights yeah. versus aerating. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That's good. So again, we're gonna let this probably 10, 12, 10 to fifteen minutes. At what temperature again? Four fifty. So it's a hot oven. Um, and we're gonna let that crust just brown up. And then what we'll do is when we come back, we'll take it out, let it cool, and as it cools, we'll start cooking our delicious pineapple. Okay, food. we are gonna take our ooh. It's been about ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well is that supposed to happen? No. <laughs> Alright, so here's what happened. <laughs> well, it looks good. It smells good. It does. It's um, but what here's is it? what happened. The sides slid down. So, how so, do you prevent that from happening? Well, what I could have done, and I guess <clears throat> if I were to, when I do this the next time, I'll try to remember, is I would take another pie plate and put it on top to oh, kind of keep it's, everything. While it's baking? Yeah, to keep it, everything. So, it looks puffy on the bottom. Yeah, it, well, that right? that'll go down when okay. it cools because, you know, see if you can, it's baked beautifully through. So we're going with the Julia Child philosophy of just make it work. and We're going to make it work. Let me tell you something. Once we get the filling in here and the whipped cream on the top, no one's the wiser. But if, if to do this again, like I said, I would get, I have another pie plate the same size. I would maybe put a piece of parchment paper, put the other plate on top okay. of it. All right. Okay. Good to know. And that way the sides won't kind of slide down, which is what they did. Okay, what's We're going to go with it, yep. okay? Because it's the only pie crust I got. But we're going to, I'm getting my stuff together for our filling. So now we're going to make our filling uh, for our pineapple cream pie. Ralph, we're going to start with putting a cup of sugar here in a saucepan. Uh, let me turn the heat on here. I got a cup of sugar. Here's a half a cup of flour. No liquids? They're coming. Oh. <laughs> and then um, I've got a quarter teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons. That is orange peel. Orange peel, okay. Okay, it's dried, all right? So we're gonna, let's mix all of this up, okay, in here. To that, we are going to add a cup and a quarter of water. Okay, a third of a cup of orange juice, and then I got an eight ounce can of pineapple here, crushed. A whole Miguel. Pina in Espanol. Yeah, pina. You're right. All right. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to combine all this together, and we are going to bring this to a boil. Okay. Um, and as it comes up to a boil. Uh, we should uh, see it thickening up, but I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to switch this out and maybe use a whisk. More of a whisk. Okay, so let me just kind of mix all this in. These are three beaten egg yolks. Just the yolks, okay. We're not putting those in yet. Okay. Okay, those have to go in once this gets boiling, uh, and then we're going to have to do a tempering technique so we don't essentially cook those egg yolks um, but okay. we'll get to there in a couple of minutes let me I'm just gonna keep stirring and combining this I want that flour especially to be to dissolve dissolve and then this will thicken to a boil and it's at about what type of like a medium I've got it up to medium high here okay. bringing it up to temperature so, right, so you just okay. want to keep keep uh, an eye on the yep, heat keep, and keep moving the liquids around absolutely around. take a look at this See oh, how yeah. thick that is now? You can certainly see it thickening up. Yeah. Okay, it didn't take long. As soon as it got to, you know, the pretty much the boiling point, it really started to thicken. And then so did you lower the heat? I did. I've got this heat down to sort of medium-low. 
Mmm. You can smell the pineapple. You can smell that orange, that citrus. Yes. Okay. Yum. So, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take just what's stuck to the whisk here. Yeah. And we're going to do like this. Oh, is that what you call tempering? This is tempering because what this is going to do... Slowly cook the eggs. It's going to slowly raise the temperature right. of the eggs slowly, gradually, which is what we want to do. Let me grab some more of that stuff. Because you don't want scrambled eggs. We do not want scrambled eggs. We definitely do not. So this is called tempering. We'll do this a couple more times. And then is that eventually going into... Then the eventually we're going to add our egg mixture back in there and then cook it for a couple minutes more okay let me grab some more of this there we go at this point is the I'm loving the cha 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 yeah it gives it a nice uh, background for this uh, tropical pineapple delight so is okay it, is the is the pudding or the filling is it off at this point or is it still on it's still on. Just medium low. Very low, right? So now we're putting our egg mixture, which has been tempered back in. Which and we're going to stir it, this in. This keeps it from getting uh, turning into a breakfast dish. And the, of course, the egg gives it a richness and a custardiness. Nice, glossy. Um, not quite a custard. I oh. know what you're thinking. Well, it's not custard. Because there's no milk in here. Well, but this will be good for our coats. Yes. <laughs> Give us nice, shiny coats. So we're going to cook this for just another couple minutes, then I'm going to take it off and we're going to let it cool, okay? And then we're going to put it in our pie shell there that is cooling off. And then we'll make some nice whipped cream to go over the top. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the burner off. Now, remove from heat. Remove from heat. For the last little bit, let me take a tablespoon of butter. Ooh, now you're talking. Okay. Let's put a tablespoon of butter in here. And that'll also add to the richness, add to the, richness the, 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 the glossiness. Okay. And we're just going to stir that in until it melts away. Okay, so you could use salted or unsalted? Yeah, I think this was uh, unsalted. So, anyways, yeah, I'm going to put that in there. Okay, we're going to let this cool, and then uh, we'll give it a few minutes, then we'll pour it into our pie shell. Then all we got to do okay, is Okay, so topping. you know what? Our filling has, it's not completely cooled, but it's Enough for cooled it. off enough for what we need to do with yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to put it in like super hot. So we're putting in our little bit of our challenged pie crust here. But it'll be fine. Okay. You know, it's all good when it's in the belly. That's right. And I think it will look nice when the whipped cream is on top of it too. You won't Yes, so. whipped cream forgives a multitude of sins. It sure does. Okay, so here's the filling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the uh, refrigerator. Because I really, I want this to be nice and cool. So Remember, we're putting real... Dairy, dairy whipped whip cream on top of this. I you don't want to put whipped cream on something that's even warm because it will immediately start to melt. Yes, and get so, liquidy. Yeah, so I want this to cool off. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. So it's going to set or get settled yes. nice and cool, then you'll put the whipped cream on top. We'll put the whipped top whipped right. cream on the top. And we'll be back. Wow. It's pineapple that's goodness. Pineapple-y. Um, with a little orange which is a great combination, pineapple orange. We'll be back to put the crowning touch on this pineapple cream pie. Uh, it's nice and cool. It's been in the fridge for oh, an hour or so, okay? okay? So now I think we're gonna whip the cream up. 
So here's the thing with whipping cream. It even looks okay just like that. You know what I mean? Like I, got, I would totally eat it just like that. <laughs> I know you. What I'm saying as far as taking it to somebody's house. I mean, but, open, when, but once the cream's on top, it's yeah, gonna be even open, more. open face pie. Yeah, you can start a new thing. All right, open so, face insert pie. <laughs> Um, all right, so I've got a pint of whipping cream here, which is probably more than I'll need. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Any leftover whipping cream will not go to waste. Put it in our coffee. Okay. Uh, well, and then, but with whipping cream, a good thing to do is to keep everything cold. So even the bowl I'm going to do, I put it in the freezer for uh, about a half an hour. Like a martini glass. Okay. Or a frosty mug. For root so beer. we're going to pour in our heavy cream. Even looks heavy. Mm -hmm. It's okay. like a cement. <laughs> now, what I'm what I have is I have some pineapple flavor. I thought it might be fun to put a little of that in the whipping cream. Yes. Normally, I would put in vanilla extract. Mm -hmm. um, since we're going for the whole tropical pineapple yeah. thing, we do need to sweeten it up because there's no sugar obviously in this cream. So I'm not going to make it real sweet. I'm going to put in about a quarter of a cup of sugar here. We'll add that to the to the whipping cream, the topping, and uh, um, to that pineapple. Maybe a teaspoon. Like I said, actually, let me do that now. Uh, I'm putting a teaspoon of this, and then what we'll do is I'll whipping cream. You just gotta keep going until we gonna we want to make sure we want to get it nice and firm, uh, so that it will you know. Hold up to the top of the pie. How's that? Mmm. That nice? It almost has a little, maybe it's just my imagination, it almost seems like it has a little yellow tint to it. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's the light. But the pineapple juice was clear. Yeah. Um, so, here we go. Now, you could, of course, if you wanted to, you could do all kinds of fancy you, tricks. You could pipe this on with a piping bag, you know what I mean, and really... Uh, do peaks and things. Yeah, make, with a little star tip and make it really fun and fancy, but uh, I'm just going to put it on this Keep way and I'll, we'll, we'll give it a few swirls here. Kevin's keeping it 100%, keeping it real <laughs> with us. Uh... We keep it real. I'm not known for my fanciful arrangements although i've done it and i do do it sometimes for special occasions but he's known for the basics that taste good so you can see i'm kind of covering up that crust if we had a crust that went to the full side of the plate it would be a different story but all right here we go now so here's our whipped cream so I had a pint. I could have used a half pint. Uh, had I had one, it would have been enough to do the job. But like I said, this whipped cream will not go to waste. Um, now I'm putting it on everything. Plus we have um, pumpkin pie. Maybe we could put it on. Yeah, we do have a pumpkin um, pie. Okay, so let me fill this. It's in. almost like <laughs> spackling. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're good now, with that. Now I'm taking this spoon. And I'm going to do like this. I'm going to put some... See those waves I'm creating? I don't know if you can tell. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the pie. Putting a little flourish oh, of... Just a uh, little. A little... Just with the back of the spoon. We'll just kind of curl it around like that. I call it your creamy Rococo flourish. Maybe uh, an idea too would be if somebody wanted to put little pieces of crushed pineapple on top as that would be an topping. excellent idea cherries, if I had any more. Chopped up cherries. If cherries. I could even put a little of that orange peel. Yeah, keep the orange and pineapple simpleness of it. Um, so, matter of fact, let's just try that since I have it right here. So this is our orange peel. How about if we just kind of garnish? Little sprinkles. Yeah, that's nice. Almost makes it look like a little nut. Which is another idea. You could use chopped nuts if that was to your liking. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Here it is, folks. Looks good. Pineapple cream pie. You could do a meringue instead if you wanted to on this, but I love the whipped cream. So, 
Anyways, you know what? We had a great time putting this pie together. Hope you had a great time. <laughs> no, no, the other way. I want to see the crust more. Oh, oh, you want to do yeah, this? Yeah, I want to see the sides. Hope you had a great time being with us. I we did. certainly did. Have a great time being with you putting this pie together. And you know what? We will see you next time right here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.